Do this and it's the usual thing. If you have something wrong but your work is essentially correct, let me know, okay? And we get the possibility of some partial credit. So, one through five. You're given a lambda bounded by the functions f of x equals x. And g of x equals x squared. Density function rho, constant density. Okay? We want to find the area of the lamina. The area of the lamina is the integral. Now, the intersection points are 0, 0, 1, 1. Yeah, a lot of ways to do it. Basically, set the two equal to each other and solve for x. You get 0 and 1. So go from 0 to 1. It's top minus bottom. And integrate it. So x squared over 2, x cubed over 3. 0 to 1, you get 1 half minus 1 third, which is 1 sixth. Okay? So that's the area of that uh, lamina. The mass of that lamina is its density times its area. Since we got constant density, just take the area and multiply by rho. And like I said, in Calc 3, that's going to be totally different because then you got a varying density. So the problem is a little bit more complicated, okay, in a Calc 3 setting. But right now, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, the third one is the integral that gives the moment from the x-axis. A moment from the x-axis is a mass times a distance. A distance from the x-axis, what we said we do is go right to the midpoint. And the midpoint of that rectangle between the two functions is their average. So the midpoint here is f of x plus g of x over 2. So the moment from the x-axis is our density function, 0 to 1. The distance is the sum of the two functions divided by 2 okay, times x minus x squared dx. So what this does is adds a distance in to the mass. Okay, So we get mass times the distance. So that would be c. Okay. And the moment from the y-axis, we need a distance. The distance from the y-axis is x. So instead of this distance, we have that distance. OK? Any questions on that? OK. Uh, oh, there is an x bar. x bar is equal to the moment from the y-axis divided by the mass. Okay, Here's what it is. x bar is the x-coordinate of the center of mass of that lamina. OK, any else on that? 6 through 9, we have an area. y equals the square root of x, x equals 4, doo -doo 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 -doo. and we're taking this here and we're going to whip it around uh, various lines here. First of all, the x-axis, we're going to take this rectangle, as this goes revolved around the x-axis, we're going to generate a disk. The volumes is going to be the sum of all the volumes of all those disks, and that's equal to A. Excuse me one second. No problem. What's up? I need my copy of the table and the room's locked. Can I borrow it? Oh, okay. First, you need my keys to get into there, and then you need my slide card, <laughs> and then you need my uh, RAM card. Uh, you it's got a RAM the card? Desk. Yeah, yeah. So. There you go. Oh, whoa. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. No sweat. We can do it, Carl. Um, x axis. So the volume as this gets whipped around the x axis will generate a disk. It's going to have the pi. X's are going to go from 0 to 4. 
r squared. Now this is going to be r as this gets whipped around. That's the radius of that disk. That r is the distance from the x-axis. The distance from the x-axis is y. And y is the square root of x. So it's the square root of x squared. So you just got an x there. OK, so that's what a is. OK, so a would be the answer there. The y-axis. Now, as this gets whipped around the y-axis, this is parallel to the axis. It's going to generate a shell. That volume is going to be 2 pi, 0 to 4. r, distance from the y-axis, which is x. h, which is the height of this rectangle, which is the distance from the x-axis, which is y, but it has to be in terms of x, square root of x. And that's x to the 3 halves. And I guess I left it that way, yes. So the answer there is d x to the 3 halves. x times the square root of x. y equals negative 1. As this gets whipped around, y equals negative 1. Okay. This will generate a washer. The volume is going to be pi 0 to 4. Big R, now big R is from here to here. And big R is equal to this distance, which is the square root of x plus 1. So we got the square root of x plus 1. Little r is this distance. That's a constant 1. Okay, So you'll get that, which is uh, b. And finally, x equals 4. As this goes around the line, x equals 4. Again, we're back to shells again. So 2 pi, 0 to 4. Am I still in the paper? Yep. Yep, yep. Um, r. Now, r is this distance here. What is this distance equal to? It's equal to this distance, 4, minus this distance, the distance from the y-axis, which is x. So that's going to be 4 minus x. h, which is this height, square root of x. OK? So you got a 4 uh, minus x uh, square root of x. That would be c. And then I have two gifts from me to you, you know, presents. When you. revolve, yeah, you're welcome. When revolving around the, uh, on the x-axis and using a delta y, okay, the above area about the x-axis using a y. So now I'm asking you, what the heck do you get if you take this rectangle around the x-axis? Well, it's parallel to the x-axis. You're going to generate a shell. That answer is a. And revolving the y, the above area around the y-axis using the delta y's, now you're going to get a washer because you got the gap in here. So that answer is C. Okay. Any questions on those? You board train or what? You should be, no. huh? No, no, you're not. I'm good. Okay, good. All right. All right. <laughs> All, right. All right. What's that? Shock. <laughs> All right. Okay, 12 through 14. You're given y equals sine x from 0 to pi. Okay, here's sine x from 0 to pi. And we want to set up the integral that gives the length of the curve. The length of the curve from 0 to pi is. The square root of 1 plus the derivative cosine squared dx. Okay. And the surface area about the x-axis, surface area about the x-axis. When you revolve this around the x-axis, okay, you're going to get 2 pi 0 to 1. Ooh, that's a bad integral there. Um, and again, you're going to have to do RL. Now, when you take this around the x-axis. You're taking this piece of arc length around the x-axis. And what you have to do is how much area is generated by that piece of arc length. And what we did, we cut it, opened it up, and got this rectangle that's generated by taking this arc length around the x-axis. And that area is going to be 2 pi r. So you get 2 pi r, this height, l, a little piece of the arc length, which is exactly what you have here. Bless you. you. Okay, so that would be the surface around the x-axis. If you were to take, do I ask that? I don't think I. Oh, maybe I do. That's 13. 14. Yeah, about the y-axis. 
It's all the same except for this <coughs> r here, that distance. Instead of being this distance when you go around the x-axis, it's going to be this distance when you go around the y-axis, and that's equal to x. So that's what you got. And then 15 through 17, we have the uh, spring constant, um, Hooke's law, F equals kx. It says that a force of 10 pounds stretches it two feet beyond. Solve for k, k is five. Find the integral that gives the work in stretching an additional two feet. So we're already two feet beyond natural length. We're going to go an additional two feet. So we're going to integrate from two to four of the force here, which is 5x. That will be the work done. OK, two to four, that is a, You did all that stuff? Wow. Thank you, sir, for work. No sweat. My cards are back at my desk, too? Yeah. Wow! And the door. <laughs> Good deal. Um, 17 is after removing the weight, allowing the spring to go back to its natural length. Find the interval that gives the work in stretching at four feet beyond its natural length, but it's starting at its natural length of zero, going four feet beyond. Okay? So that would be the interval. <coughs> How are we doing? Okay? Good deal. 18 through 20, we've got a rectangle. Um, four by four rectangle, placed in a median, medium with a dis, uh, density of 60 pounds per cubic foot. If it's a horizontal orientation, like the desk, then the amount of force on that desk, five <laughs> feet below the uh, surface of the water up there, would be equal to, that amount of force is going to be equal to the area, four by four, four feet by four feet, okay, times the depth, five feet, times the density of the water, medium, whatever it is. And you notice the cubic feet all cancel and it all works out nice. You get 4 times 4 is 16, times 5 is 80. You get 4,800 uh, pounds. Okay, that would be the force. Whoa. Okay. Uh, 19, if it's, now we're going to take a, a vertical orientation. So here's, here's the water. And the top edge is at zero feet. So we got a four by four right here. Okay. So this is zero negative four. This is four zero. Okay. And we want the force on this. Now, yeah, go ahead. Um, for 18, you said the answer was 4,800. Yes. Yes. Why? Do you have that? D? Yeah, but I think you marked it. Okay, no problem. We'll take a look. Um, now, in 19, you could, oh, you have to do the integral, so there's no two ways about it. Okay, so if it's, so the integral, the force on this thing is equal to the integral, uh, the density, 60. We're going from negative 4 to 0. Okay. What we've got to do is take this length, but it has to be expressed in terms of y. But it's a constant 4 anyway, so it's no big deal. It's 4, OK, times the depth, which is negative y, dy. What you've got here is, is the force on one piece of this one rectangle. The area of the rectangle is its length here times a delta y here, OK? times the depth of the opposite of y. So this integral will give you the force, OK, on that whole rectangle, all right? And the whole square, in this case, 4 by 4. And then you can find the force by doing the integral out, or, if you want, realize that what you could do is flip this rectangle right about the midpoint at negative 2. Instead of taking it this way, go this way, and then find the force on it 
with this horizontal uh, orientation at negative 2. So you could do it or do the integral. doesn't matter. I'm going to flip it. I'll do the integral. What the heck? All right. If you do the integral, you get negative 240. The integral, I took a negative 1 and a 4 out. The integral of y, y squared over 2. So you got negative 120. Okay. And then you got a 0 minus 16. You got uh, negative 120 times 16, uh, 192, 192, is that what it comes out to be? Yeah, 1920, I think. Okay, that's what it looks like. But, if, you know, what you could do is, like I said, you could take this and flip it this way. Let's do it that way. The four is doing it that way. What do we got? We got this four foot by four foot square times a depth of two feet, okay, two feet below, times the 60 uh, pounds per cubic foot density. Okay, everybody see what I'm doing? I'm taking this, flipping it this way right around the midpoint. So you get 1632 times 60 uh, pounds, and that's equal to 1920 as well. So you could have done it that way too. Okay, that's the test. We all set? Everybody's okay? All right, everybody's okay. All right, let's, uh, let's go on. Okay, 8-1. 8-1 is a review of integrals. <clears throat> what we're doing in this chapter is techniques of integration, methods of integration. The bottom line is we're going to be given integrals in this chapter that are not immediately changed in, you don't have the ability to immediately change them into integrals that we already have, one of those integration forms. And I'm going to list all the integration forms you have right now. These are the integration forms you should know at this instant. You should know these. The integral of u to the n, u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c, and is not negative 1. Okay, that's the very first one. Then you should know the integral, 1 over u du, okay, natural log absolute value of u plus c. <coughs> Excuse me. The integral of e to the u is e to the u plus c. Okay, you should know the integral of sine u negative cosine u. The integral of cosine u is a sine u. The integral of a tangent u is a negative natural log cosine. You should know the integral of secant u. Jeez. Natural log absolute value secant u plus tangent u plus c. Now, I'm not going to list cotangent and cosecant. However, having said that, if you had to, hopefully you could figure out the integral of cotangent by using that little trick of cofunctions. The integral of cotangent would be a positive, take the opposite, natural log sine. And the integral of cosecant, because you may run across this in WebAssign, I must say, okay? The integral, but I would not put these on a test, all right? The integral of cosecant u would be a negative natural log cosecant plus cotangent u. You replace the trig functions with their cofunctions. Take the opposite, okay? But there's another two you should know in the trig ones, and that's the integral of secant squared u is tangent. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. The integral of secant u tangent u is secant. And I got to tell you, we're going to use all these uh, not so much today, uh, although we're going to start with sines. We're going to do sines and cosines today, but uh, next class, it's all trig stuff. Okay? Bless you. And, oh, and Melissa's allergic to trig stuff, as you can tell. So it's going to be a brutal class on uh, Thursday. Oof. You should also know, believe it or not, uh, the inverse trig ones. We've got uh, 1 over the square root of. Uh, a squared minus u squared. It's 
1 over a inverse sine u over a. We got the integral of 1 over a squared plus u squared. That's the inverse tangent, u over a. And then we got the integral of 1 over the absolute value of u, square root of u squared minus a squared. Geez, I would never give you this on a test, this one here, for sure. But these two, you might uh, see on a final exam. Um, that's equal to the inverse secant u over a plus c. Those are the inverse trig ones. You only need three inverse trig ones because if you ever have a negative here, which will give you the inverse cosine, you don't need it. You take the negative out front and you get the opposite of the inverse sine one. So you don't need the other three. We also have cosh and cinch. Integral of cinch is cosh. The integral of cosh is cinch. Uh, let's see. That's really all of them that you should know. There's an a to the u form, but it's a to the u divided by the natural log of a, but I don't see that is uh, important enough to put down on here. We won't run across that. All right, I think that's all the integration forms you should know. I'm going to assume when we do the rest of this chapter that you know these forms, because our goal in this chapter will be to take an integration that we're given and change it into one of these forms. Okay, that's going to be our goal, to be able to do that change. And we're going to have various techniques and methods for doing that kind of a change. All right? And we'll start today with some of those. But also in 8.1, they give you a review of the integrals that we did from before, but they also mention a couple of other things. And I just want to go over this a little bit before I go on to 8.2. And that's a problem like this, say x squared over x plus 1. What would you do with this integral? I think this integral belongs in this chapter, but we did it before. So what do you have to do first? What's the first step? Is it a tangent? No. no. Divide. Thank you. That's exactly what you have to do. If the numerator has greater degree than the denominator, divide. OK, is everybody OK? All right. All right, do the division. So it's x squared divided by x plus 1. x times x is x squared. Subtract. Okay. x times, you need a, a negative 1 or a minus 1 there. Subtract, that's your remainder. So this is equal to the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. Okay, this is a technique we, uh, we talked about a little bit, doing that division. And now you can integrate it x squared over 2 plus a natural log absolute value of x plus 1. This is a 1 over u du form here. Okay, check it out. Make sure that makes sense because you may run across that here. There's another thing that we did not mention. Well, the other thing we did mention is this one. This is another thing you may see in this uh, chapter. I think it belongs in this chapter. Well, we talked about it before in the previous chapter, not the last one, the one before that. What do you do for this integral? And again, they want to Game in, you know. What do you do? Yeah. What? It's been a long time. Nick, what do you do? I had a question. Oh. That's all right. You had a question? Yes. Go ahead. For that minus x, I'm sorry, it will be high. When you did the division? Yeah. It's minus x minus 1? Yeah. Why didn't you just leave it positive and then doesn't it automatically, don't you automatically subtract it anyways? Well, you have to subtract it from 0, so this x becomes a negative. I, I get that part. Okay, no, okay. I, uh, okay. It becomes a negative because of the... Because this is 0x minus 1x. You have to do a subtraction. You have a minus sign before that x squared plus 1, right? I know we did this before, but wait, wait, wait. it confuses me sometimes. We're subtracting the x from 0x. So we got 0x's up here. So it's 0 minus 1 is what you got, which is a negative 1x. And then for the next one, wouldn't you do negative x? Oh, so you did a minus to make it plus. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. I think Sorry, that confuses me a couple times. All right. I think we're okay. Yes. I guess. All right. Okay. What about this one now? What do you do here? Can you change it to x plus one to the one half? You could, but that's not going to help. I remember this one. Remember this? It's one. one. You form like Sign you in. have to put in. Uh, the middle is going to get it. Do you let u equal x plus 1 or something? Yeah, that's one way. One way is to let u equal x plus 1. That way will work. You solve for x and dx and make the substitution. I prefer a slightly different thing to let u equal not the x plus 1, but to be the square root of x plus 1, the whole square root. Okay. I think you should be doing it this way. Let u equal the square root of x plus 1. We're going to transform this integral into something else. This is typical of what we're going to do this chapter. We're going to take integrals that are given and transform them into something else. And I'm going to do that here by letting u equal that square root of x plus 1. Square both sides. Solve for x. Solve for dx. Take the derivative of both sides. You take the derivative of this. That's 2u du dx equals 1. And then bring the dx over to get this. The idea is to change this integral to something else. And by letting u equal the square root, what that does is eliminates the square root. That's the problem with this, is that square root. So now when I rewrite it, I have x. That's u squared minus 1. The square root of x plus 1, that's u. dx, that's 2u du. OK? This integral is a simple integral. If you multiply, take the 2 out and multiply this out, you're going to get u to the 4th minus u squared. You get 2u to the 5th over 5, u cubed over 3. And then if you go back to x's, where u is the square root, you get 2 times x plus 1 to the 5 halves over 5 x plus 1 to the 3 halves over 3 plus c. And that's what you get. That's something from two chapters ago that uh, will come up occasionally in this chapter as well. Okay. There's one other thing. I don't think I mentioned two chapters ago because it doesn't come up. But it does come up in this chapter. And that's to do the following. What's that? Oh, yeah. Right here. Sure. What did you guys do today? So you know you you knew you'd be going to my class, so there's no need to go to that other class. I just woke up late. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, you ready? No, what's wrong? Well, I got what? Five over two here. When you uh, okay, we did the integral of u to the fourth, which is u to the fifth over five. I replace this u with, okay. now, this is what Danielle said before, x plus 1 to the 1 half. That's what I end up replacing the uh, u with, x plus 1 to the 1 half to the fifth, is x plus 1 to the 5 halves. That's where that came from. Okay. All right, there's one other thing, um, and I don't believe this comes up two chapters ago, but I was looking at your homework, and it's in your homework for this 8-1, so let's take a look at this. And that's a problem like this. And these are nasty. Here's the problem. You may look at this and say, well, it's pretty, it looks like a 1 over u du form. And it does look like a 1 over u du form. But it is not. The reason it is not is because we don't have a cosine up there in the numerator to serve as the du. If you let u equal the 1 plus sine, your du is going to be cosine x dx. You don't have it. You're stuck, except for this little trick. And the trick is to use a conjugate, OK, to change this. The conjugate of that is 1 minus sine x. I'm going to multiply numerator and the denominator by 1 minus sine x, OK? 
Now, you may be familiar with the conjugate uh, when you rationalize um, expressions that have square roots. You know, if you had 1 over 3 plus the square root of x in the denominator, you would rationalize that by multiplying numerator and denominator by 3 minus the square root of x. It's conjugate. Well, the same little trick works for trig functions as well. So what happens here? You get 1 minus sine x. When you multiply this out, you get 1 minus sine squared. No middle term. But what's 1 minus sine squared? Thank you. And what you can do now is split that fraction up. See, what you can't do in the beginning is to split this up. You can't split fractions up over the denominator. That's not legal. But you can split up fractions over the numerator. So you end up with 1 over cosine squared minus sine over cosine squared. Okay. <sighs> now, here's the thing. What the heck is 1 over cosine squared equal to? What is it? Secant squared. That'll wait, Kester. That's secant squared. Now, I've got a sine over cosine squared. I'm going to consider this a sine over cosine. And what's sine over cosine? Tangent. Times 1 over cosine, which is secant, dx. OK? You with me? OK. What's the integral of secant squared? Tangent. What's the integral of secant tan? Secant. And that's the answer. So I thought the integral of secant squared was tan x and secant x. No. The integral of secant squared. The integral of secant squared is tangent. The integral of secant tan is secant. OK? The secants and tangents are easy to con confuse. The derivatives and integrals are very similar. And uh, the only way not to confuse them is just to do enough problems. Or just before you go to sleep, uh, spend an hour memorizing them every night. Not just one night, of course, but like every night. Every night. Every night, yeah. All right, how are we doing? I want to point those out. Those are really techniques of integration that belong in this chapter. but. Uh, Web assign the book assumes that you know them from before, from two chapters ago, although we didn't do this from two chapters ago. I don't know where it first comes up in the book. But there it is. Okay? That's something you may have to use very rarely, but it does come up occasionally. All right, so 8.1 is a review of the integrations that you had from chapter 6, okay? And 5, rather, chapter 5. Be sure to do that homework, OK? Be sure you can do those integrals. Those are the integration forms we already have with a couple of these things thrown in there. What we're going to do the rest of the chapter now is take some integrals that are not obviously any one of these integration forms. And what we're going to have to do is change it in some manner to get to one of those integration forms. So you're going to have to know the integration forms, OK? What's that? Not that, well, you're, yeah, well, all right, in that sense, yeah. All right, so let's do the first, let's do A2. A2 is integration by parts. And to do integration by parts, let's go back to uh, the derivative of a product, the product rule. The product rule and derivatives. <laughs> Yes, go ahead. So pretty much what we're doing is kind of going back to the first chapter. chapter. Yeah. And we're just breaking into pieces. Well, what we're, we're going back to the first so chapter. We're going into more detail. Yeah. And, and what it is is we're going to be doing integrals now. It's not obvious what the form is. For the most part, back in chapter 5, it was pretty obvious how, what, what the integral was. I mean, if they gave you the integral of um, x plus 1 cubed, uh, yeah, that's a u to the n form. 
Or if they give you the integral of 1 over x plus 1, yeah, that's a 1 over u form. Or the integral of sine 2x, yeah, that's a sine u form. It's pretty clear cut what you've got there. It's not going to be clear cut now. You're going to have to do something first, all right? And let's go, the first one is called integration by parts, like I said. And to, gener to, to derive it, we've got to go back to the product rule. So, the derivative of a product, uv, with respect to x, okay, this is back to calc 1 now, was equal to what? How do you take the derivative of the product? It's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. That's the product rule. That's calc 1. Take a derivative. Well, we're going to write this in what's called differential form without the dx's. In effect, multiply everything by dx and cancel those, in effect. There's the product rule in what's called differential form. Let's integrate both sides. Okay? Now, see what happens. What's the integral of this derivative of uv? Let me ask you this way. What's the antiderivative of this derivative of uv? UV, UV yeah. They're inverse operations, OK? They're inverse operations. They undo, each, each undoes what the other does, okay? They're inverse out. This is uv. Now, it's plus a constant. But I'm going to get constants over here. I'm going to bring all my constants to one side. That's equal to the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du. Okay? Now, I'm going to solve for the integral of u dv. I'm going to throw this integral on the other side. So I'm going to have this. I'm going to a new piece of paper. OK, you ready? OK, here we go. The integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. This is integration by parts. That right there. Now, what the heck good is that? I'll tell you what good it is. Let's take a look at this integral. Let's take a look at this integral, x e to the x dx. Here's an integral. We cannot do this integral right now without integration by parts. You just can't do it. If you didn't have an x in front, it's a simple e to the u form. If this had been an x squared in the uh, for the exponent, it'd be an e to the u form, e to the u du form. But because we have an x and an e to the x, you cannot do this integral with the basic integration forms we have from chapter 5. But we can do it with integration by parts. This is what you do. You identify a u part and a du part. That was my bad. Okay? This is x e to the x dx. Okay? The du doesn't make any sense there. I'm going to identify a u part and a dv part. Now, what I'm going to do is solve for du and by taking the derivative. I'm going to solve for v by taking the integral. Now again, you're going to get plus a constant, but we're going to get a constant at the end, so we don't need the constant here. What I'm going to do is replace this integral with this one. This is my u dv. Here's the u. Here's the dv. That's equal to uv. Here's u. Here's v. Okay, uv minus the integral of v. Okay, du. Check it out. Oh, so you broke it down. Yeah, I did. I broke it down in pieces, just what you said before. 
It's U DV. I identified a U part and a DV part. I solve for, I, I already have a U and I have a DV. Then I solve for DU by taking the derivative and I solve for V by taking an integral. And then I put it back into this form, UV, there's UV, U, V, minus the integral of V, DU. What about this integral of E dx? It's a simple integral. It's an integral we can do. And that's our answer. And we're done. Yeah, really, that's what it is. So we can't integrate the x? We can't integrate x e to the x. There is no product rule for integrals. You can't say, oh, that's the integral of x times the integral of e to the x. That does not work, OK? But what you can do is break it apart by using integration by parts this way. Now, you may ask and say, OK, Burns, let's take another look at this. Why not let u equal e to the x and the dv equal x dx? Why can't you do it that way? Well, you could try it that way. After all, we, you've got several possibilities for breaking this up. As long as you identify a u and a dv, and when you do the dv, make sure the dx is in there, because the dx has to be in with the, for the dv. Now, what's du here? What's the uh, derivative of e to the x? e to the x. What's the integral of x dx? x squared over 2. So here's what we got. This integral is equal to u v u v minus the integral of v du. Whoa, what happened? By making that assignment and making this substitution, we end up with an integral more complicated than what we started with. A sure sign that you didn't do it correctly, OK? If you end up with an integral more complicated than what you started with, and we have an x squared over 2 now, it is more complicated. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> when you're doing it, you're probably sitting on what web assign, and it's a nice long problem. <laughs> well, the ones on web assign shouldn't be. I mean, we're going to do a couple more of these. So could you still do that though? Like if you took the integral of that, and it'd be like integral what? The x squared over two. Can't do the integral here. Nope. How do you want to do that integral? What do you want to do? You can't take the integral of x squared times the integral of e to the x. That's not allowed. What if you That's take a u of that? What's that? Say it again, Trent. No, yeah, you're right, because that's just way more complicated than what we started with. Yeah, what you could do is take this and break it down by parts. You'd have to do parts twice. But what would you end up with? You'd end up with what you, this here. You'd eventually be able to get it. But when you make these assignments and you end up with an integral more complicated than what you started with, a sure sign you, you want to do something else. Now, sometimes. You're going to end up with an integral that's of the same complexity of what you started with. And in that case, you may have to repeat the process. I'll show you one. You ready? Here we go. This is a little complicated, but I think you guys can do it. You can keep going and going. Oh, you can get in circles sometimes here, too. And uh, you don't want to be doing that. Sure sign that something is not right. <laughs> All right? And I'm going to show you one now where it looks like something's not right, but it works out really nice. You ready for this? Yes. Here we go. This is the integral of e to the x sine x dx. This is an integral we simply cannot do with our elementary integration forms that we have from chapter 5. It's none of those. Okay? It's a clear case where we should try integration by parts. One indication that integration by parts is to be used is the fact that we have a product of two distinct functions of x. We've got an exponential function. We've got a trig function. You should, first of all, see if you have something easy. Sometimes those forms are easy. Sometimes you get an e to the u. If this had been e to the cosine times sine, it's an e to the u form. It's easy. Don't, don't need integration by parts. But most of the time, when you have the product of two different functions of x, like this, and it's not one of our elementary forms, 
It's an integration by parts problem, okay? So if you see an x sine x, integration by parts, x natural log x, integration by parts, x e to the x, integration by parts, e to the x. Yeah, that multiplication of two different functions of x. Yeah, that's an indication you got integration by parts. Let's do this one. This one's a little tricky, though. So is sine to the x? Well, what do you want to do? Let u equal what? Give me sine x? Yeah. OK. Yeah, we'll try. The dv is e to the x dx. OK. du, the derivative of sine, cosine x dx. v, the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x. All right, is everybody okay? I don't know, some jumping jacks or something may be in order here. What? No, some people are just obviously tired, that's all. I'm tired. What's that? I know it's late. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, I'm not mentioning anybody in particular. No, Danielle, no. Uh, just There are people that are tired here. Nick is tired, but Nick doesn't show up. As I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right, so here we go. Oh, we got, oh, we got a ways to go. Oh, <laughs> All right, well, 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 we'll keep on going. Okay, here we go. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this now. Okay, U V. Okay, U V minus the integral of V du. This is what integration by parts gives me, okay? Here. I just use integration by parts right here, okay? We identified a u part, the sine, the dv part, e to the x dx. That's equal to uv, well, here's u, here's v, minus the integral of v du, v du, okay? But, is it more complex than what we started with? No, it's of equal complexity. It's an e to the x times cosine this time instead of an e to the x times sine. We're gonna repeat the process. One of two things will happen. Either we'll be able to solve for that integral or everything cancels and we end up with zero equals zero, meaning we should have done it a different way. Okay, go ahead. Can you show that formula again? Okay, the integral of u dv okay, is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. That's integration by parts. Okay, thank you. No problem. It's okay. All right, so I'm going to do this again on this integral. I'm going to take this integral right here and apply integration by parts to that integral. So here we go. I'm going to have a u of cosine. I'm going to have a dv that's e to the x dx. Here is one thing though. Since we started with u equals sine back here, I know I want u equal to be the cosine one here instead of the other way around. That's when you get the zero equals zero. Yeah. You want to keep it the same. If you don't, you'll get that zero equals zero thing that I was talking about. Watch what happens here. This is kind of cool what does happen. So du, the derivative, negative sine, V is e to the x. Okay? So here's what I got. The integral of e to the x sine x dx is equal to e to the x sine x minus this integral. But what is that integral equal to? U V minus the integral of v du. Now I got a minus here, I got a minus here. That's going to be a plus. Okay. Okay. Check it out. You got to look at this. It's complicated, I know, but you guys can do it. Check out, make sure this makes sense. And please note, if I had done this the other way, and Instead of taking the derivative of this to get a negative, if I had taken the integral of this, it would be a positive, and everything cancels out. But now, what's going to happen is this. I'm going to drop the grouping symbols, 
And I'm going to add this <laughs> integral to both sides of this equation. And what happens when I add this integral to both sides? I'll have two of them over here. And I also have a constant from any one of those integrals. And divide by 2. When I divide by 2, I have the integral of e to the x sine x dx is e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x plus a constant all divided by 2. That is the integral. And we're done. It's a case of finding the integral. We didn't actually do the integral. We solved for it. Okay? And that's what integration by parts can do for you. Yes? So um, does one of the parts stay a derivative? Or do you integrate the whole? Like you only integrate part. Part of it. I only integrate oh, part of it. What are, what are its uses? Then, if you can only it, integrate part of it. No. Well, I have done this without integration by parts. We could not do this integral. We have done this integral. This is the integral. We've done it. And how do you know when to stop? For example, it's pretty complicated. There's no integrals. Yeah, but there's no integrals left. Yeah. Yeah, but there's always an e to the x sine x. Well, there's no integral here though, so we're done. And how do you know it's correct? Number one reason you know it's correct is because I did it. Number two reason you know it's correct is because we can take the derivative of this, and what will the derivative of this mess be? It should be our e to the x sine x. So let's do it. Let's check it. Let's take the derivative of this, OK? We got a 1 half here, a constant. It's easy enough to check. Take the derivative of e to the x sine x. That's first. It's a product rule. Times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first minus first times the derivative of the second okay <coughs> plus bless you but it's minus the, so it's minus whoa 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 okay uh, second times the derivative of the first holy mackerel why did I do this Okay, and the derivative of the constant is zero. Forget about that. So I've taken the derivative of this expression, and what do I end up with? A one half. Now let's see what happens in here. I get e to the x cosine minus e to the x cosine here. These cancel. I've got minus minus, which is plus. I have a sine x e to the x plus another sine x e to the x. That gives me two e to the x sine x's. And the twos cancel, and I end up with e to the x sine x. So that's what I have. Go ahead, Danielle. What other way? The other way is to trust me that I did it correct. There is no other way. Oh, 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 let u equal e to the x way in the beginning? I could have done it that way. You want me to do that? I'll do it. Okay. Let's do it. You ready? You go ahead. You got that 2x to the, you, so you multiply the integral, you don't divide it. Wait, where are you? Um, all the way at the bottom. Oh, bottom. Towards the second one to off the bottom. Yes, all the way to the. See, what I did is added this integral onto each side. When oh, I. So when you add it, it comes Yeah, two of them. Okay. Yeah, that's it. All right, let's do that one. Let's, uh, we're going to crank through this one by letting u equal the e to the x part this time. Let's do it. So let's let u equal e to the x. The dv is the sine x dx. The du is e to the x dx. The v, the integral of sine to negative cosine. Okay. This integral then is equal to uv uv minus the integral of v du but well, that's a minus this is a minus so that's going to be a plus okay and what we've done is 
what we did before, we reversed it. We got sine to cosine. Now I got to do it again. I'm going to let u equal e to the x. Why do you have to keep going? I don't feel like you stopped Because you still got an integral, and they're different. You haven't done it yet. You haven't finished it. Um, the dv is cosine x. du is e to the x dx. v, the integral of cosine, sine x. So now, here's what I got. The integral of e to the x sine x is equal to opposite of e to the x cosine x plus, now what's that integral equal to? uv minus the integral of v du Drop the grouping symbols. This time it's preceded by a plus, so there's no need to change signs. I get a minus here. What am I going to do? I'm going to add this integral to both sides, giving me two of them over here. This is what happened before. Okay. The plus c comes from any one of these integrals. This integral has a plus c. Um, that's where the plus c is coming from. And now divide by 2. And guess what? We have e to the x minus e to the x cosine x plus a constant over 2, exactly what we had before. Long as you're consistent with these u's, that'll work. As soon as you switch them, things will cancel out and you get 0 equals 0. So just be careful with that. All right, what other integrals can we do with integration by parts? Well, it turns out there's quite a few of them. Today? Um, I'm going to start the next section. Yeah, I'm going to start it. I'm going to do uh, sines and cosines only. The next section is on trig integrals. It starts with sines and cosines, and then it goes over to tangents and secants. I'm not going to do all that today. I'm just going to do the sines and cosines one. And I'll finish that section um, next time, and then do trig substitutions, uh, and then start partial fractions after that. And then uh, after that, we got finished partial fractions. And uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. How we doing? All right. All right. Everybody okay? You okay? Mm -hmm. okay? Yes. How do you pick? Like, how do you know which what's you and what's you? Uh, for, uh, that's a good question because you don't. How did you pick like the correct one? Like the easier way. This here didn't matter. As long as I was consistent, I, when I first did this one, I let u equal the sine x, and we did it, and it all worked. You have to do like trial and error. Well, not really, because hopefully you can look ahead a little bit. For example, that very first one I did, the x e to the x one, the very first one, you want to make sure that after you apply integration by parts, you end up with an integral that is not more complicated than the one you started with. If you integrate x, and in other words, have the x over here in the dv part, you're going to get x squared over 2. It gets more complicated. By taking the derivative of x, it gets less complicated. Generally speaking, if you have a rational expression like x's or x squared or x cubes, those are going to be your u parts. Because when you take those derivatives, they get simpler not more complicated. Now, with things like e to the x's and trig functions, integrals, derivatives, doesn't matter. They retain their degree of complexity. All right. So it's going to be just a matter of, uh, why well, is that trial and error? I kind of disagree with that, although, well, you're kind of right. I mean, I, I just, yeah, I'm just trying to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it. That, that's the answer then. I'm going to go with that answer. Trial and error. No, if, if you've got x's and other things, let x's, x squares, x cubes be your u part. So you may get this. Okay, you may get something like this, x squared e to the x. What's your u here? x squared. Why? Because you're going to take its derivative to get 2x. It'll get simpler. Let's do it. Everybody's supposed to be no energetic. 
<laughs> no, huh? <laughs> it doesn't work that way? No. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. D was 2x dx. V is e to the x. So this integral is uv minus the integral of v du. I could take the 2 out front and get this. Well, gee, we still have an integral in here, and we can't do this integral. But what have we accomplished? We, we dropped this, integral, this um, exponent from 2 to 1. In other words, we made it easier. If we repeat the process, what's going to happen? The x will disappear. And that's what we saw happen when we did x e to the x from before. The x disappeared. So sometimes one iteration is not enough. But you can see that you're on the right path because it is simpler. So what do you do here? Let u equal the x. The dv is e to the x. The du is dx. Now the x is gone. The v is e to the x. So what do you get? x squared e to the x minus 2 times this integral. What's this integral? uv minus the integral of v du. Okay. And now that's a simple integral. So you end up with x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x plus c. Okay. Multiply this thing through. Okay. Nice. Okay. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Now, there's one more class of functions where integration by parts is used. And that's things like this. What's that? No, this is still 8.2. This is still another application of integration by parts. There's basically two applications. Two times we use integration by parts. The one time is when you have the product of two distinct functions of x. x squared e to the x, uh, e to the x sine x, those kinds of things. But there's a second time when you use it. And that's to do an integral like this. Believe it or not, you can't do this integral at this moment without integration by parts. You may say, well, the integral of natural log, don't, didn't we already do that? And the answer is no. We did the derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. We did the integral of 1 over x dx, which is natural log. But we did not do the integral of natural log. How do you do this integral? It's by parts. Okay. So you let u equal, well, all right, I'm going to ask you guys. Is natural log u? Yes. The, the thing is, if you put it over here, the natural log over here, dx, you're going to have to integrate it to find v. Well, that's the problem we got right now, to integrate natural log. So that's kind of silly. So we're going to let u equal natural log x. The dv is going to be dx. OK. What's du? Thank you. And what's v? X. X, thank you. OK. Integral dx is x. So what's this integral equal to? uv minus the integral of v du. x is cancel. You got x natural log x minus x plus c. And if you take the derivative of this expression right here, guess what? You get natural log x. Go ahead. Natural dx is x. Yeah, well, yeah let's do it. Let's take the, let me take the derivative. It's first times the second, second times the of the first, derivative of x is 1, derivative of c is 0, this is 1 to 1 together. And you get natural log x. Go ahead. No, the second term is the second term of 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 the second the end, put the plus c at the end. You don't need it here, put it at the very end. Okay, so. Just put it at the end. All right, how are we doing? All right, I got one more of these to do. And then that's it for this section. That's it for this section, yeah. It's true. So here we go. And that's a little bit more complicated one. And that's the integral of the inverse trig functions. We don't have the integrals of the inverse trig functions. We have integrals that give us inverse trig functions. 
but we don't have the integrals of the inverse straight function. Okay. We have these integrals, the result of which are the inverse straight functions. But we don't have the integral of this, or the integral of this, or the integral of this. We don't have it. How do you do? By parts. So let's do it. Let's do the inverse. Wait, i got to get this in order here. How come I got more of them over there? What the heck? All right, I'm all over the place here. All right, let's do uh, inverse sine. I'm going to have a u and a dv part. You tell me. What's u, what's dv? Sine is probably u. Inverse sine, and the dv is dx. du. What's the derivative of inverse sine? It would be negative cosine. No, it's not. It's cosine, right? No, it's not. It's 1 over something. It's 1 over square root. That's it right there. That's the derivative of inverse sine. And the v, the integral of dx is? X. Thank you very much. So here's what we got. The integral of inverse sine is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Ooh, now. This integral looks nasty. Can anyone suggest how we can do that integral? Do it the other way. Uh, not the whole square root here. Do you do just one minus x squared? Yeah, exactly. This is a u to the n form, where u is equal to 1 minus x squared. du is a negative 2x dx. Not a problem. I've got an x up there. I need negative 2 of them. I'm going to multiply by negative 2 and a negative 1 half, which will make this a positive. Okay. And I have this now. x inverse sine x plus 1 half. And what do I have here? I have u to the negative 1 half du to u to the n form. Check it out. Make sure that makes some sense. Okay. So, we got x inverse sine x, 1 half, u, add 1, divide by half. And why did you put it through here? This two here? Because when you divide by half, you multiply by 2. Does it make a lot? Yes, it does. So, we got x. U, which is 1 minus x squared, and half plus c. That is the integral of inverse sine x. <coughs> and I'll tell you something. If you take the derivative of this expression, it looks like it's real messy, and it is for a little bit, but things cancel out, and guess what you're left with? Inverse sine. Do you believe me, Danielle? You believe me? Okay. Once you answer my question. Okay, go ahead. So don't get where you got the two. Just what? <laughs> what? This two right here? Uh, okay. Okay. When you integrate this, you add one to the okay. exponent, it gives you one a positive one half, and you divide by that one half, which is multiplying oh, by yeah. two. How are we doing? Good. Alrighty. That is eight point two integration by parts. Let us begin 8.3, okay? We're just going to begin. I'm not going to do the whole thing. 8.3 is trig integrals. Okay. Trig integrals. Now, we have some trig integrals already. We know the integral of sine, of cosine, of tangent. We know the integral of secant. We know the integral of secant squared and the integral of secant tan. Isn't that enough? No, it's not enough. We have to do others. Wait, is this like the ones that are like tan over? Yeah, yeah, that's where we got. I'm going to just stick with the sines and cosines right now. 
Let's take a look at this one. Let's take a look at cosine cubed. It's a property. What's that? Is it a property? Well, yeah, what we're going to do here, you're going to need those trig um, identities. Did I, I never gave you a piece of that piece of paper of trig mm -hmm. things to know, huh? Damien. You, you didn't count one. I didn't count one. And we didn't use it the whole time. Yeah, I know. Because now we need yeah, it in count two. <laughs> and I didn't give it. If you could remind me sometime, you know, during the day. Yeah. To, tomorrow morning. Yeah, tomorrow morning. That would be great. To do the trig in identities up and make some copies so I can pass them out. Basically what it is are the trig things you should know for calculus. Okay, it's one piece of paper. They're in the, deck, the textbook, aren't they? Well, they have. They, no, the, everyone has the textbook. Yeah. The e-text you have. Yeah, it's on web assignment, but that's I, I'm, it's one piece of paper. It's handy. It's it just sums up everything you need to know. All right, here's the deal. <laughs> you cannot do this integral right now. It looks like it's a u to the n form where u is cosine. The problem is there's no sine to serve as your du. If you had this integral, if you had this integral, this is easy. Let u equal cosine, du is a negative sine. There's a sine, make it negative. That's easy enough to do, multiply by negative 1. You get u cubed, du. It's a u to the n form. Because you had the sine to go with it, to serve as your du. This one doesn't have the sine to serve as the du. Now what do we do? Here's what you do. You're going to split this up. Go ahead. What the du be of dx? If you let u equal cosine, the du is a negative sign, and you don't have it here. What do you want to do with this? Like we did with other ones and just make it. Well, can we make it like cosine squared x times cosine x? That's what I'm going to do. Oh, no. All right. Well, well let's add some ideas. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, we're going to split this up. Cosine squared. No. Oh, well, by parts is a possibility here. The problem with by parts here is it gets real messy. It's possible to do some of these by parts. Some of them you end up going in a circle, but some can be done. The better way, however, with sine cubed, cosine cubed, sine and cosines to odd exponents is to split one of them off. This guy here, that's cosine that we split off, will serve as our du. The others, the cosine squares, we're going to change to sines. Pythagorean identity here, which I'm sure you all know, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. That's when you should know, right? Yeah, Damien, you're laughing like, no, you don't, you know it. Uh, it's not that many. That was like pre -cure. Yes. Yeah. See, that's what does it. All right. <laughs> what good does this do? I'll tell you what good it does. Now, if you multiply it out, you get cosine minus sine squared cosine. Well, that's not bad, because now what's the integral of cosine? The integral of cosine is sine. And what do you have here? This integral is a u to the n form. u is sine. The du is cosine. You have the du now. So it's just sine cubed over 3. That's your answer. So you split one off, convert the rest to their cofunction. Danielle, you look a little bit confused. I'm just confused from... Day one, from everything I did today. Right? No, don't say that, please. All right, go ahead. Um, second second. So last second. Okay, you are okay to hear? Yeah, no, no, I'm okay after the, just after the parentheses. I'm like, what happened? Right here. I multiplied it through. Oh, okay. Distributed property. Okay. I let u equal sine. What's that? It, it got used up in the du. Watch this. All right. Watch this. Here we go. Let me do it. I will do it for you. I'm going to let u equal sine. du is cosine x dx. 
So I get u squared du. Where's the cosine? It's in here in the du. That's where it is. It's in here. What's du? Cosine x dx. What's the integral of u squared du? u cubed over 3. Let u equal cosine x. Oh, it is. And then the du would be sine, and we got an extra sine. You so know? Just got rid of the all right, all right, hold on. Let's make sure we're okay. Let's go back to this. This is we got to make sure we can do this. Well, I got the I got the one minus sine squared. Okay, you guys all right to here? Mm -hmm. I'm all right to the before the second one before it's where Daniel got lost right there. Okay, so. Here's what I did. I started with cosine cubed. I said, okay, that's cosine squared cosine. Mm -hmm. Cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. It's a Pythagorean identity, which you should know. Yes. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. Mm -hmm. I multiplied it out, distributed property, to get this. At this point, I've got two integrals. One integral is the integral of cosine, which is sine. And the other integral is this integral of sine squared cosine. which is u squared du, where u is sine, the du is cosine. It's just like we did up here with the cosine cube one. Okay? This is u, this is your du. So I can rewrite this integral as u squared du. You may ask, where's the cosine? Well, it's in here. What's du? Cosine x dx. Okay, I got it. You got it. Trent, you got it? It's like bringing out the two in the front. You know, like it cancels out. I'm going to do another one. Let me do another one, all right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do another one. Wait, which was the final answer? Final answer is? Is it the sine x minus sine? Here. Okay. 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 Final answer. Okay. Okay. Let's do another one. Okay. 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 That was the integral. That was the integral of cosine cubed. Oh, that was cosine cubed. Yeah. Time. I could do the integral of sine cubed, but it's, it's just the same. I'm going to make it a little bit. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Watch this. Let's do the integral of sine cubed cosine cubed. Yes. You want to confuse? Is that you're trying to confuse us more? No, I'm trying to enlighten you guys more. True. Now, I've got sine cubed, cosine cubed. So does, does that mean you can just do mm -hmm. u and du? Continue. That's what I'm going to do, but I've got we got to do it right. Any suggestions as to the first step? What should we do here? Break apart something. We're going to break apart. What do you want to break apart? Sine and cosine. Uh, we only have to break up. We only have to. <laughs> we only have to break up one of them. Okay. What? Well, see, the, the thing is. We have both of them are odd, so I, uh, we can take our pick here. Let's take the sine. Let's split one of the sines off. Let's break up that sine cubed and split one of those guys off. Okay? Okay? So I'm taking that one sine x that I split off from the sine cubed and paired it up with the dx. This is going to serve as the du part for this integral. Now. What do I have over here? I have a sine squared and a cosine cubed. I'm going to take my sine squared that I have left and make it 1 minus cosine squared. So the identity for those are just not common, right? Yes, you're going to have to know those, that, those basic identities. That's why I need to get that. The one, the one for sine is 1 minus cosine, the one for cosine is 1 minus sine. Squared, yeah, the read squared. Simple. Yeah, that's pretty simple. Okay, now what? Multiply it out. Like so. Okay. Check it out. Now, go ahead. Um, why do so we have to break it up if we have sine and cosine? Because if you don't break it up, what are you going to do? What form are you going to do? You don't have any of our integration forms here. You don't have. A, a u to the third du. You, 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 you just don't have it. So if it was like, Go ahead. Let's say if there was any other number besides the three up there. What do you want? Uh, 
like just sine squ like squared cosine. No, 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 you know what I mean. Cosine squared x. Like if you just changed like the, where the three is, it made it two. Okay, and everything else is the same. Yeah, you still have to do the same thing. You yes, you do. Right. But here's the difference, though, Danielle. This is a good question because the difference is. What you don't want to do now is take one of these signs out of here. You want to take the cosine out of here. That leaves you the cosine squared, which will enable you to change it to sine squares. Okay? See, in this problem, this is what you would do. Now that's going to be your du. Yeah. See these cosine squares? I'm going to change them to sine squares. Okay, now multiply it out. And guess what? I've got a very similar situation here. What do you do here? Multiply it out. I'm going to go back to my original problem, okay? The original problem gives me this. Okay. I could do the same thing here, just multiply it out. Now, how do I integrate this expression? What, what form do I have right here? What form is this? U to the n form is what it is. That's exactly what it is, where u is equal to cosine x. du is a negative sine x, which is easy enough to do. Just multiply by negative 1. What's u in this one? Cosine again, add away, good deal. The du is a negative sine. Okay, so I have the opposite of, the integral of, u cubed du plus the integral of u to the fifth du. So they could be different technically speaking. If, they, if you wanted them to, let's say. I'm not sure what you mean. You can have one part with a u that equals sine and one part with a u that equals um, In this, I, I there it. are I cases where you can't. You if can. I had sine x, cosine x, the integral, I could let u equal cosine and du is a yeah, sine. That, I get u equal sine. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, is everybody okay? Go ahead. The sine x here? No, no, down. Down? This one? I multiplied through. <laughs> Distributed property. Okay. Now, what do we have? U to the fourth over four. U to the sixth over six. But what's u equal to? Cosine. So I got cosine to the fourth. Go ahead. The, like how sine x dx or cosine x dx is your du. Like okay. What I'm to see. Yeah. Okay. What, yeah, what I'm saying is if you have the integral of something like sine to the seventh cosine x, this is a u to the n form where u is sine and the du is your cosine. By letting u equal sine, the du is cosine. I've got the integral of u to the seventh uh, du. Because of the derivative. I need that derivative, though. See, this integral, forget it. You can't do this. It looks like you should. It looks like this integral should be sine to the eighth over eight, but it's not. Because u to the n is u to the n du. Yes, correct. Because I need the cosine to serve as the du, and I don't have it. Yes. That's what you need. Now, here's what here. I'm going to have to throw a complication in here. As long as one of these sines or cosines is odd, I can do what I've been doing. As long as one of them is odd. Now here, the cosine was the odd one, the odd exponent, and I took one of these cosines out, left me with a cosine squared, which enabled me to change it to sine squared, 
which gave me the sines times the cosine, and I could do the integral, u to the n forms. This one, they were both odd. I had a choice. I could split off a sine. I could have split off a cosine and done the problem that way. What happens if neither one is odd? We've got a problem. Nah, here's what you got to do. You ready for this? This is the last thing I'm doing today. And here we go. Nah, you got to use a trig identity. And this is one you may or may not know. Let's take a look at this. Sine squared. You can't do this integral right now. It looks like it should be sine cubed over 3, but it is not. Why not? Because you don't have the cosine to serve as the du. It's not a u to the n form. If you let u equal sine, your du is cosine x dx. There, it's not there. And if it's not there, you can't do it that way. Okay? You need that cosine to serve as the du. What you need is a special turg identity. It's called a half angle identity. And the fact of the matter is sine squared is 1 half 1 minus cosine 2x. That's what sine squared is equal to. Is it the same thing with cosine? And cosine squared is equal to 1 half 1 plus cosine 2x. Why are they called half angle identities? They're called half angle identities because if you replace the x with a 1 half theta, this would be cosine theta. They come from the half angle identities that you get in trig. Okay? That's cosine 2x, right? Yes, that's cosine 2x. So if we have sine squared x to do, here's what you do you replace it with 1 half. 1 minus cosine 2x dx. You take the 1 half out front. And then you do the integral. The integral of 1 dx is x minus. The integral of cosine 2x dx. Here, I'm going to write it out. This is what I have right now, the integral of cosine 2x dx. Let me write it out so I don't do it. Okay? I did the integral of 1, that's x. But now I've got to do this integral here. What form is that integral? Cosine 2x dx. Cosine u is correct. Thank you. u is 2x. du is 2 dx. I'm going to have to multiply by 2 and by 1 half. Why do I have to multiply by 2? Because I need a 2dx to get my du. My answer is 1 half x minus 1 half. I have the integral of cosine u, which is sine u plus c. That is the integral. That's the answer. I know it's pretty nasty. Okay. Now, the final, final integral here, I suppose you have both of them in the same integral and they're both even. I suppose you have this. And this is nasty now, okay, here's what happens. You may say, well, why can't we take the sine squared and make it one minus cosine squared? and then multiply it out, and you get cosine squared minus cosine to the fourth. Well, the cosine to the fourth is a pain in the neck. It's cosine squared squared. Use the half angle for cosine squared. Square that, and you have to use the half angle again. There's no getting around the fact we're going to have to use the, co the half angle twice here. Here's what you have to do. Here's the best way to do this problem. Replace the sine squared with 1 half, 1 minus cosine, Replace the cosine squared with 1 half, 1 plus cosine. And I got to tell you, the sine squared and the cosine squared integrals, you might think, ah, I'll never see them again. If you take differential equations, you'll see them again. They come up. All right? They come up there. OK? 
Okay. So now what? One half times one half is one fourth. I'm going to multiply this out. I've got one minus. Now I got plus and a minus here, so they got no middle term. Cosine squared of two x. That's you doing it fully out. Yeah, if you fill that out, the middle terms will cancel, and that's what you're left with. Okay. Now. The integral of one, that's that's nothing. That's a no-brainer. But I've got this other integral. I got cosine squared of two x now. How do you do the integral of cosine squared of two x? What is that? No, u to the n doesn't work because you don't have a sign to go with it. And you would need a sign of two x to go with it, and you don't have it. Oh, it's possible to use integration by parts here, but it's a little tricky. I would advise it. So u, u, u equals 2x, right? No, that's not going to help because that cosine squared is going to make it so you end up with cosine squared of u. Okay. It, it's, it's still bad. Like one minus. Yeah, it, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the half angle on this one. Watch this now. Okay, it's a little tricky here. The integral, cosine squared 2x. I've got cosine squared of 2x. Now, if you put a 2x in here for x, you're going to get this. <coughs> 1 half, 1 plus cosine of, what would the argument here be of the cosine? Uh, it would be 4x. 4x. Yeah, I think. Exactly right. Okay. If you got a 2x here, you're going to have a 4x here. So you and, well, you double it is what it is. You're doubling it. Okay. You rid me on this? Okay. So let's do it. 1 4 x minus 1 8. Now the integral of 1 is x plus. I have the integral of cosine 4x dx. Very nice. Thank you. U is 4x. The du is 4 dx. I'd have to multiply by 4 and by 1 4. I've got 1 4 the integral of cosine u, which is the sum. That's the answer. That's the answer. Could multiply it all out. Actually, Damien, you should probably multiply it out and combine these guys, but I'm at the end of the paper here. Yes? Did you have a question? No, just okay. um, For on the top, uh, when we did the sine squared x dx, you said you can do the u to the n form, but what if you took cosine and moved it to the other side and did a 1 over cosine x? Okay, wait a minute. Yeah. What do you want to do? You said they can do the u to the n I said you can't do the u to the n Uh, all right, all right. So you're going to use integration by parts on this. Is that what you're telling me? No. What are you doing? Just tell me what to write. U equals sine sine x. Okay. And then the du would be cos. Uh, du is cosine x dx. Yep. Would you be able to? What I'm asking, my question is, would you be able to? You know how we throw numbers over the thing? You wouldn't. Would you be able to do that with cosine? Or no. You can't multiply this by cosine x and multiply this by 1 over cosine x. That's not allowed. You're not allowed to multiply and divide by a variable here. Mm -hmm. The fact that if you take a 1 over cosine x out, it changes everything. It, it's, it's, it's wrong. You can't do it. Okay. You may do constants, but you can't do variables. Okay? okay? That's, that's Just can't do variables. Was. Okay, bless you. You would have made it much easier. Oh, yeah. That would be nice <laughs> if you could just throw that in there, but you can't. All right, how are we doing out here? Go ahead. Can you explain where you get 1 over 4x? Right here. When you let u equal 4x, no, um, the 1 fourth here? No, I have like 1 fourth for integral. This here 1 fourth? Yeah, I know where we get that one. Like equal 1 4x minus 1 fourth. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
This here? Yes. When you integrate 1, it's x. And I'm multiplying it by 1 fourth. This one fourth is one fourth by one. Okay. Go ahead. That when you did u equals 4x, that d u equals 4 dx? Yes. Well, I don't understand where the 4 went. I see the 1 4. Well, when I multiply this by 4 and by 1 4th, I have a 4 dx here and the 1 4th here. This 1 4th is here. This 4 dx is your du. Okay. You end up with cosine u du. The integral of cosine u du is a sine u, and I replace the u with the 4x. It's not that bad, Trent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, here's, 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 what, uh, here's what you should be doing. For Thursday, you should be doing 8-1 and 8-2. Now, you can start 8-3 on, on web assign. I believe the first couple in 8-3 are sines and cosines only. But they soon change to tangents and secants. And that's what I'm going to do on Thursday. So we haven't done all of 8-3 yet. I will finish 8-3 on Thursday. We will do 8-4 and start 8-5 on Thursday. Get him in.